Once Goku and Vegeta had concluded their respective fights, it was Site's turn to step into the ring. His opponent was none other than Dabura, the Prince of Hell. The young Saiyan descended to the lowest part of the ship to engage in battle. Upon arrival, he found Dabura calmly waiting for the fight, leaning against the wall with a smirk on his face. With a snap of his fingers, Dabura transformed the terrain where they were going to fight. Suddenly, they were in hell. The floor was a somewhat dark mauve color, the air was hot, and the ground was rough. Some parts were pointed, forcing the young Saiyan to tread carefully on the few smooth pieces. Dabura was comfortable, as he was in his own domain, giving him an advantage. The fight began with Dabura gracefully advancing towards Site, who was ready to strike. The young man quickly transformed into a Super Saiyan under the watchful eyes of his opponent and his friends, who were observing the fight from a window overlooking the battlefield. Dabura launched an attack at Site, who dodged with the same grace with which Dabura had attacked. The fight was intense, with both fighters refusing to back down. At that moment, an idea seemed to strike Dabura. After observing Vegeta a couple of times, he confronted Site. What's wrong with you? Are you giving up? Site asked. Of course not, young man. It's just that I have found the perfect warrior. Master Babidi, are you listening to me? Dabura responded. Indeed, Dabura, and I must say that you have had a brilliant idea, the old sorcerer chuckled. What's going on with those two? What warrior are they talking about? Goku asked Aisha. I'm not sure, but we should be very cautious, Aisha replied. As if Aisha's words had been a premonition, Babidi chose to possess Vegeta. The sorcerer recited some words in an unintelligible language, which served to possess the prince of the Saiyans. On Vegeta's forehead, an M-shaped rune appeared. It was black, and was drawn with thick and elegant strokes, similar to the rune that appeared on the clothes of Babidi and Dabura. The moment Vegeta was possessed, he let out a loud and diabolical laugh. What a joy to see that you are now on our side, Vegeta. To celebrate this happy moment, I have a task for you. To show your loyalty to me, you must eliminate these annoying intruders, Babidi pointed to Aisha, Site, and Goku. Bah! The only one I'm interested in is Kakarado. Vegeta flew towards Goku, who changed his calm expression to one of concern. Come on Vegeta, what's wrong with you? Remember, Babidi is our enemy? Now is not the time to fight each other. Although I won't deny that I want to test your strength, Goku tried to convince his comrade. Do you think I'm such an idiot as to let myself be possessed by that foolish sorcerer? I want to fight against you, Kakarado. I won't tolerate the son of a lower class warrior being stronger than me, Vegeta retorted. All right, let's fight, but not here. Let's go somewhere away from people, Goku suggested. Vegeta nodded, and both warriors flew to an esplanade away from the people. Aisha and Site stayed on the ship to fight Dabura. Babidi and Dabura disappeared, leaving the woman and the teenager alone. Aisha flew to the lowest part of the ship, followed by Site. There, they found the sorcerer alongside his faithful henchman. In front of them was a kind of brown, wrinkled cocoon hanging from the ceiling. The two hybrid Saiyans looked at it in surprise, not knowing what it was. Aisha, do you know what that is or what it could be? Site asked. I'm not sure, Site, but what I do know is that if those two are looking at it with such fascination, it can't be anything good, Aisha replied, worried. As our friend Sufurigen had ventured, there was nothing good in that cocoon. Before the eyes of those present, the cocoon began to open. Babidi looked at the cocoon in terror, as he hadn't expected it to open so soon. Site threw a Kamehameha at the cocoon, but it was a failed attempt as the cocoon managed to open completely. From within emerged a plump creature with pink skin, he wore a cape and white pants, and had a kind of antenna on his head. Dabura addressed the creature, Wow, so you're that Bu. At first glance, you don't seem very strong, Dabura said. Tititi I, I want ice cream, comma, Bu responded. What? Dabura asked, confused. Bu wants ice cream, comma, Bu wants ice cream, comma, Bu repeated stomping his feet like a child. Are you an idiot? Don't you hear me? Dabura asked, annoyed. I said I want my ice cream. Smoke began to come out of the pores of Boo's head. Aisha, what's going on? I don't understand anything, Site asked. It seems that the man who came out of that cocoon is the fearsome Majin Bu. Aisha explained. Are you sure? He doesn't seem as fearsome as they make him out to be. Rather, he seems like a very nice man, Site shrugged. While the two warriors were talking, Dabura and Bu began to fight. As Babidi had said, despite his childish behavior and affable character, Bu was a formidable and strong fighter. He was so powerful that he was able to defeat the Prince of Darkness himself with just a couple of blows. Indeed, Bu killed Dabura after turning him into a chocolate bar. After Dabura's death, 
Piccolo, and Krillin regain their original forms, and cease to be stone statues. Yu is very angry. After the fight, he flew away from the strange ship, leaving behind an enraged Babidi. The sorcerer continued to curse Bu until Bu turned around, and struck Babidi, turning him into a chocolate bar just as he had done with Dabura. Aisha and Site pursued Bu. Along the way, they found Misty, Piccolo, Krillin, Yamcha, and all the warriors who had been left in the care of the statues of Krillin and Piccolo. The two Saiyans descended to inform their friends about the bad news regarding their new and formidable opponent. Aisha was the first to speak. The situation is very serious. I think the best thing will be for you to go and train at the sacred temple, because soon we will have to fight Bu. Aisha suggested. Understood. I'll call C-18 to help me with the training, Krillin agreed. And you, Mr. Piccolo? Will you train with us? Yamcha asked. Yes, I have a request. I would like to train Kirin, Chiyoko, and Kaido. I think those children can be very helpful for the fight, Piccolo proposed. Oh, well, yes. I'll leave my Kirin in your care. But I think you should ask Bulma about Kaido and Chiyoko, Yamcha suggested. It's not necessary. Mom knows that something bad is going to happen. She won't object to you training my little brothers, the boy smiled at his teacher and friend. Misty, do you want to train with me? Kirin and Kaido will train together. And I want you and Mr. Piccolo to train me. The tender Chiyoko asked. Of course. Misty agreed. After Piccolo and the other warriors went to train at Kamisima's temple, Aisha and Site searched for Vegeta and Goku's key to warn them of the danger of Majin Buu. But it was too late. The fight between Vegeta and Goku was at its peak. Both opponents were somewhat fatigued after several intense minutes of exchanging all kinds of attacks. The two warriors paused their fight when they sensed a new and powerful key approaching their area. They scanned in all directions until they spotted the source of the key. It was a chubby man with pink skin. Vegeta, in a fit of arrogance, approached the man in a confrontational manner. Who the hell are you and what are you doing here? Vegeta demanded. He wants ice cream. Where is the ice cream? The man replied. Shut up insect, you sound like an idiot, Vegeta retorted. Well, I'm not an idiot. The man protested. Vegeta, be careful with that man. He doesn't seem like an ordinary opponent, Goku warned. Leave it to me, Kakarado. Once I'm done with him, we'll resume our fight, Vegeta responded confidently. Goku nodded and retreated to some nearby rocky clusters to continue observing the fight from there. Vegeta launched several waves of ki at Bu, but they didn't seem to harm him. Bu retaliated by punching Vegeta in the face, which angered the Saiyan. As time passed, the fight remained intense. Vegeta was gradually exhausting his energy while Bu didn't seem to tire at all. Goku watched the fight with concern. He had promised not to intervene, but he also didn't want to stand by while Vegeta took a beating from this strange opponent. In a desperate attempt Vegeta, gathering the last of his energy, formed a powerful Big Bang Kamehameha to finish off Bu. His opponent, demonstrating his prowess as a fearsome warrior, counterattacked Vegeta's attack. As Babidi had said, Bu was a formidable being. With just one attack, he defeated the Prince of the Saiyans. A bewildered Oisha, who had just arrived at the scene, was left staring at the place where one of the strongest warriors they could imagine had been defeated by her beloved husband.